Uh, we are planning on having communion service this Sunday. And so on Saturday from uh, 9 to 11, we will be here at the church and to pass out the elements for communion. And so those of you that have notified us and let us know uh, that you will be picking up your elements, then you can come and, and we will be here and we uh, will be following the sanitized um, uh, order of, 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 of um, distance. And so um, uh, be sure and come and pick up your elements. And then those of it have notified us and give us an addresses, then we will bring those to you. If you have not done this yet, do it before Saturday, okay? And so we can uh, get that prepared and get those elements to you. And we will have uh, family uh, or church uh, communion on that Sunday. Also, I want to remind you that we, um, uh, first of all, I want to thank you and commend you for your faithfulness in giving. You've done tremendous in mailing in your tithes and offerings and and using the new online giving. Thank you so much for uh, continuing to support the church and uh, uh, this body. And appreciate that so very much. And I uh, want to remind you that we do have the online giving in place. And so if you would like to uh, uh, do that, uh, you can uh, go on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page and find the app to do so. And so to set up your account. Or you can continue to uh, <clears throat> mail your tithes and offerings to Post Office Box 344, Malvern, Arkansas. If during this time, uh, if you have a prayer request or a prayer need, uh, be sure and not don't hesitate to give me a call so that we can uh, be praying for you. And also, uh, you have the availability to call the prayer chain. And so you can call those ladies and they will... Uh, get on that prayer list and, uh, and, and call your name before the Lord. We want to go to the Lord in prayer tonight, and uh, we want to continue to remember uh, these that are on our prayer list, Michael Jimerson, uh, Debbie Clark, Jason Amerson, uh, Diana Bennett, uh, Paulette Fowler. Uh, be sure and remember Ben and Kenzie Gifford, and also the uh, victims of COVID-19. And uh, let's... Uh, Remember also our shut-ins, Betty Hightower, Elizabeth Slate, and Sister Betty Rogers. So let's bring these needs to the Lord tonight. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to bring our needs, our, our desires, O oh God, and Lord, our situations, O oh God, before the throne of grace. I pray, God, that you'd minister, Lord, and touch, O oh God, Lord, each and every one of these, Lord, in the middle of their situation. Lord, we know that there's no boundary to your precious word. And so, Lord, we stand tonight professing and confessing the word of God that says, By your stripes we are healed, O Lord. And, Lord, we confess that over these lives. And I pray that, Lord, these bodies and these situations would receive a revelation of your word. Lord, you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise and honor you. I pray tonight that you would help us, Lord, to minister your word. Oh, God, I pray that holy anointing, oh, God, to fall upon the messenger here tonight. Let these words go forth to minister, O oh God, and to bring encouragement and blessing, Lord, to your people as we give you all the praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'm going to take my text from Colossians chapter 2 and starting with verse 13. We're coming up on Good Friday. Good Friday was... Uh, is symbolic of the time that uh, Christ was crucified on the cross of Calvary for our sins. He made provisions. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. And so he paid redemption's price for you and for me. And so I just want to remind you tonight that the cross has the final word. The cross has the final word in every situation in a child of God's life. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13 it says, And you being dead in your sins and the, the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together 
uh, with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Amen. After the reading of this text tonight, we have enough, amen, that we can clean from. Glory to God. Amen. We could stop right here and receive anything that we have need of in our lives. Amen. Because the blood has been shed. The price has been paid. Glory to God. And we, amen, have been redeemed from the curse of the law. And so the Lord Jesus Christ has made provision, hallelujah, for our lives. You see, the cross of Calvary paid sin's penalty, and the resurrection secured it for eternity. Amen. Glory to God. Because He died for us, amen, and He rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He's the first fruits of the resurrection, and because He rose from the dead, we too, glory to God. Amen. I love the scripture where Paul says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, hallelujah. Amen. One of these days, there's going to be a great gathering. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall rise to meet uh, them with our Lord in the air. Glory to God. Oh, listen, the cross of Calvary is the only thing that stands between the saint of God and hell. Amen. It's the only thing that stands between us and eternal penalty. Glory to God. So I thank God for the cross of Calvary. You see, the cross made all the difference. The cross of Calvary today is an empty cross. Oh, some religions today, they still have Jesus hanging on the cross. But Jesus, amen, is no longer on the cross. He's no longer in the tomb. He's rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He ascended to the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. And he is there. And the Bible has even went further and said that you and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He was dead, yet he is alive forevermore. You see, every accusation of the accuser, every attack of the adversary, all sickness and disease, anxiety and fear, poverty and lack, every bondage and every trap of the enemy cannot withstand the power of the cross. It cannot withstand the power of the cross. Our text said, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You see, your sins and all your failures were nailed to the cross. Your sickness and disease was nailed to the cross. All your fear and anxiety has been nailed to the cross. All of your debts have been paid in full. Your provisions have been made. And the victory of the cross is ours tonight. Glory to God. It's a done deal. Amen. It is finished. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Right now, we can just lift our hands and thank Jesus for all that he's done. Lord, I thank you. Lord, for the, oh Lord, for the price that was paid. I thank you and I honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. It goes on and says, and having spoiled principalities and power, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So you can just lift your head tonight and you can sing that song, Victory is Mine. Victory is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Glory to God. You are an overcomer, a victor, a saint of the living God. Oh, tonight you may be surrounded by opposition. Your marriage may be on the rocks or, or your job, amen, is an uncertainty. Or you may be overwhelmed on your job. Your family may be dysfunctional or, or you may have a bad diagnosis. 
But Romans 8 and 37 says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. You see, the cross has the final say. Amen. In anything you may be facing in this lost and dying world, the cross has the last word. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, Amen, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Oh, I want to look tonight at some things that the cross has provided for you and for me. First of all, the cross of Calvary has provided a highway of holiness. Amen. A pathway into the holies of holies in the very presence of God so that you and I can now Amen. Have a personal, intimate relationship with Jehovah God, the one who made us and loves us. You see, without the cross, there's no way to the Father, no way to have a relationship with our Savior. But Jesus is the way. He is the only way. John 14 and 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. Father, but by me. Oh, there's been many, and there are some that have said that there's many ways, many avenues, there's many paths that lead to God. But I want you to know tonight that Jesus is the only way. The only way we could come, amen, to our Heavenly Father is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary made a highway of holiness so that we could come into that holy place and bring our petitions, our needs, glory to God. Even we can come boldly before Him, honoring and praising and worshiping and glorifying our Lord. Oh, the cross, it provides forgiveness for sin. You see, the debt that was paid on Calvary has given us the opportunity to be forgiven of our sins. Be forgiven of our sins. He took our sin, our shame, amen, upon His own shoulders. He took our place so that we could have, amen, we wouldn't have to suffer. His love, amen, He loved us so much. And in His love is an amazing love. He chose to suffer and to die for you and for me. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. Amen. Oh, listen, the cross of Calvary, it provides freedom. It provides freedom to all who believe. You see, freedom from the shackles of sin. Freedom from shame and fear and disgrace and worry. Freedom from hopelessness and despair. Freedom from addiction and guilt and darkness and eternal separation from God. John 8 and 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free in Indeed, hallelujah. I'm glad to know tonight, amen, that I've been set free. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. Glory to God. The cross of Calvary, it has provided a new life. Hallelujah. You see, we're not just forgiven. We're not just cleansed and set free. But we're made brand new. A new destiny through Christ Jesus and our Lord. We are changed on the inside. And His Word and His Spirit renews our minds. And He changes our hearts and our desires. And He gives us a new purpose in this life. Oh, you see, as we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we repented of our sins. We were sorry for our sins. We were sorry for our past. We were sorry for the deeds that we had done. But not only were we sorry, amen, but we put off the old man and we put on the new glory to God. We repented of our past. In other words, we changed our lives, glory to God. And we began to follow the Lamb of God. We began to follow His precious Word. We began to bow our knees, amen, amen, to the Lord Jesus Christ and build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the sweet Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We 
changed ourselves and we became new creatures in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm here. Amen. It seems like all by myself on here. But glory to God, I need somebody to high five tonight. Amen. God is so good. Amen. The cross of Calvary has provided overcoming power. Overcoming power. It is a delegated power. It is a power that's backed, amen, by the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. Glory. When Jesus died on the cross and was placed in that empty tomb. That wasn't the end of the story. You see, the picture of the cross is not a picture of defeat, but it's a picture of victory and overcoming power. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was and still is the example of the overcoming power of God. Oh, listen, the grave couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him. And hell couldn't touch him. Hallelujah. He spoiled principalities and destroyed all the power that hell had to offer. He then made a show of them openly, putting Satan and all of his demons to shame, triumphing over them. Amen. For eternity. Glory to God. Oh, listen, saints of God, that's the reason I believe that the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, one mention of the blood, one mention of the cross, one mention of the resurrection, amen, it gives the devil, amen, hallelujah, amen, a sinking spell. It gives him a little sinking spell, glory to God, amen, as we mention the victory that was wrought at the cross of Calvary. Oh, now he's given to us that same power by his spirit. Acts chapter 1 and 8 says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And then Acts chapter 2 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire that sat upon them. And it sat upon them. And they, amen, were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Oh, listen, saints of God, today every blood-bought, spirit-filled child of God can proclaim, hallelujah, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for the cross. Oh, that cross has provided victory for us. Amen. We've been given victory over every enemy of the cross through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He took away our fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. You see, we're overcomers. Amen. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. He supplies all of our needs according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Old Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, And the Lord, He it is, that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, and he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. He will always cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus because he never leaves our side. He never leaves us, glory to God. Oh, the old black spiritual, amen, glory to God. It goes like this. He never has left me alone. He never has left me alone by night and by day. He is with me all the way. He never has left me alone. You see, we stand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And in Him, we live and move and we have our being. Oh, listen, when the enemy comes in, 
like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard against him. A standard, a flag, a sign, hallelujah. And that sign is nothing more than Jesus Christ and him crucified. Glory to God, Jesus, hallelujah, has paid redemption's price. Exodus 14 and 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Glory to God. Listen, that cross, amen, has prayed and it has provided for our eternal home. We no longer have to fear or worry about, amen, the coming days. You see, I, I tell you, I, people are, are, are fearful. They're, they're worried because of, of the perils of life and all the chaos that's going on in this world. But I want you to know tonight that if you are a child of God and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, glory to God, you don't have to fear because the cross of Calvary has secured eternal, eternal, eternal redemption. Oh, listen. Amen. Preacher, how long is eternity? It's a long time. Glory to God. It's infinitive. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, saints of God. Eternal life is not just a duration of time, but it is a quality life. It's the God kind of life. It's eternal peace, eternal love, and eternal joy. A life with no more tears and no more death and no more pain. For the former things have passed away and all things are made new. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Glory to God. You see, this earth is only temporary. Amen. This, this chaos and all of this stuff that we're going through with time. Amen. It is but for a moment. Glory to God. But we're headed for a new Jerusalem. We're headed for a holy city. Glory to God. A place that is far greater than we could ever imagine. And it's called heaven because Jesus will be there. Listen, it don't matter what's going on in your life today. It don't matter what's going on in the world today. The cross of Calvary has the last word. Hallelujah. And that word, amen, glory to God. Amen. And that word has brought redemption. That word has brought victory. That word has brought, amen, our security. It's brought our power. It's brought, hallelujah, blessing into our lives. And it's paved a way of highway of holiness right into the presence of God. It's made a way that you and I today, glory to God, as we depart this life, hallelujah, we can be with our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're not sure that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, I want you to know that we're living in our last days. We're living in the last days. But I want you to know, glory to God, that our, our two lates are never too late with God. Our two lates are never too late with God. Hallelujah. Amen. When He comes on the scene, amen, He can make, do the impossible. And we put our faith and trust in Jesus.